Ladies and gentlemen, hello again and welcome to another edition of Adobe Illustrator Tutorials. I am Mr. Grassel and today we're going to get into the pen tool. We've talked about a lot of different ways to create complex shapes in Adobe Illustrator so far. We've talked about the Pathfinder tool and the Shape Builder tool using basic geometric shapes to create complex shapes. We've also talked about the Brush tool and how you can use that to outline more complex shapes. But those all have limitations. The Pen tool is really gonna open the door. It's a game changer with Illustrator because you can draw really complex shapes like you would with maybe the Brush tool, but have that clean edge look that you'd get with more of the geometric shapes with the Pathfinder and the Shape Builder tool. It really is the distinctive feature that makes your designs look clean and digital with Adobe Illustrator. So let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial and see how to use the Pen tool. The Pen tool is one of the key features of Adobe Illustrator. The pen tool allows you to draw complex curves and shapes by dropping anchor points and manipulating the path in between those anchor points. Now you're thinking to yourself, well, you just spent two other whole videos talking about how to sh create complex objects. And that's true. Using the Pathfinder tool and the Shape Builder tool are a couple of great ways to create complex shapes. But the pen tool allows you to do some of the more organic or complex shapes you think of like a, a blob of something on the floor or the shape of a human face some of those are so organic and the curves are so unique that you can't create it with just a simple ellipse and rectangle or a triangle like that so you have to use something different the pen tool just gives you the freedom to create those nice clean lines with good curves and that gives you control over those curves. So we'll talk about how to create straight lines and curves in this tutorial with the pen tool. So over here to the left in our toolbar is our pen tool. It just looks like an old fountain pen. That's the symbol for it. You'll notice next to it, there's one with a little curved line coming out of it. That's the curvature tool. So we're not using that one today. So make sure you select the correct tool. Also P is the shortcut for that, which I'll be using throughout the tutorial. So You'll see my cursor changes to a little fountain pen. And what you do is you can just click and drop an anchor point. And then I move on to another spot and I'm going to click and drop another anchor point. And what I've done is I've created a line segment in between these two anchor points. And that's really the basics of a pen tool. What we're doing is we're dropping anchor points and in between those anchor points, we're creating line segments. Sometimes they're straight and sometimes they are curved. You'll also notice too, I had that little blue line uh, and you'll see it right now as well too. That's called the rubber band effect that they have in Illustrator CC. And what that does is it gives you a preview of what your line segment's gonna look like in between a pair of anchor points. So right now, if I wanted to make a second line segment all by itself, I can't do that right now because you can see the blue line is telling me, hey, it's gonna connect to your previous anchor point. So when you're creating line segments, what you have to do is you have to control and G. And what that does is it groups those anchor points together and says, we're done here. You can move on to the next kind of anchor point. So that's what it's, Illustrator is being told when we group it together. So now these anchor points are grouped together and I have a single line segment. If I go and hit P to my pen tool, you can see I can start a new line and it's not going to connect to the previous path. Because that's, that's what the pen tool wants to do. It wants to connect anchor points and bring them together. It, Ideally, it wants to close them out. So it's going to, and I'll show you what, that, what I mean by that with me fill it with a color too. Um, but right now it wants to close it. So it's always gonna wanna connect. So make sure to hit Control G when you wanna end a line segment. So that's just a straight line. So now let's just make a zigzag line. So I'm gonna start here and drop an anchor. I'm gonna go up and kind of just literally zigzag. And you'll see I've got my smart guides on. You see that pink line that shows up? That's something I keep on for myself, but it helps me line up my anchor points or know where things are lined up. It's just a, an alignment feature and it helps me identify certain things. Uh, you'll see how it works as well too later on with anchor points and handles when we do curves. But this just lets me know, hey, your anchor point that you're placing now is even with that previous one. So it's great for making things equal in height. Uh, my angles are probably not gonna be accurate, but at least my anchor points are gonna be in the right spot. Okay, so you can see I'm creating those little anchor points, just straight lines, just clicking once and moving to the next spot. Now hit Control G and that segment is done. So I've got that zigzag line segment with straight lines by just dropping anchor points. So that's how you do a segment 
but now we wanna make a closed fill shape. So let me just create a square. So I'm gonna drop an anchor point. I'm gonna scroll down. You can see there's that rubber band effect telling me, hey, you got a straight line. I'm gonna go across here. I'm gonna move up. And then I've got those smart guides telling me, hey, I'm even. So I, that anchor point is even with the top. And now you'll notice what I'm gonna do is look at that cursor how it's just the fountain pen, but when I go back to the original anchor point and I hover over it, that little circle pops up below it. That is the symbol for closed shape. It's letting you know, hey, you're back to the beginning. If you click on this anchor point, you're going to close this and make it a, an enclosed shape. So I'm going to click there and then we're all done. Now I have a closed shape. So just like with the rectangle tool, you can create shapes, geometric shapes with the pen tool, just like that. And it's a closed off shape. Now, remember I told you that the pen tool wants to naturally close itself out. Let's go back to this line segment here for a moment. I'm going to change the fill color to blue. And you can see at first glance, you're like, oh, wow, it filled in those shapes and made them little triangles. So that might be what you want. But technically, if we zoom in, you'll see that we have the black outline here. There's no outline underneath. So they're technically not closed off. What it's doing is Illustrator is trying to, it's taking the first anchor point and it's connecting it to the last anchor point and then it's filling the shape, everything within that. So it's, it wants to close things out. It wants to fill those things in. So when we have an open shape like this, it's gonna wanna close it out. It's gonna connect those two. Now with this shape, we've already closed it ourselves. So it's, it works really well. We can fill that in, it's no big deal. When it starts to be an issue is if we're doing, let's say the same zigzag shape, but now I want the lines. See how it kind of wants to close it out? It's saying, hey, here's the first and the last anchor point. So that's where it should be closed. But now I want to come back up here. And again, there's the first and the last. So now it's making this weird kind of bow tie shape. Not really sure what that is. And again, I make one here. Again, it's the first and the last anchor points wanting to close those out. So when you're making line segments, you want to make sure your fill color is turned off because you really can't fill this. Otherwise, it's just going to want to kind of do it itself and it's going to use the first and the last anchor point. So if you want to close this out, you're going to actually have, have to actually close and go from that anchor point back to the beginning to make it a closed shape. So that's just kind of something to be aware of as you're drawing things. And if you're like, why is this fill color going all crazy through here and cutting things off? Just turn the fill shape off and then you won't have that issue much anymore. Okay, let's delete that right there. We don't need that. So that's just kind of the basics of creating straight line segments and straight line geometric shapes with the pen tool. So just click and dropping anchor points and moving to the next spot. So now we're gonna move on and show you guys how to do some curved lines. So with curved lines, it's kind of similar. We're still gonna drop anchor points, but instead of just clicking once, we're gonna click and hold and I'm going to drag, and you'll see these little lines of blue dots come off. Those are called handles. The handles are what are used to manipulate the curves of those line segments. So I'm going to just kind of let go right there. And then again, that rubber band effect is really nice when it comes to the curves, because now it's giving me a preview of what that curved line is going to be. So I got my smart guide on telling me, hey, here, your anchor points are lined up. So I'm going to click, and I'm going to drag up to kind of finish off that curve. Now you notice too, let me go back a little bit here. So this first one, I'm gonna click and drag downward. Okay, I'm dragging down because I want that curve to go down. When I make my next anchor point and my next set of handles, I have to go the opposite. So I have to go up to finish off that downward curve. If I went down again, it would go up. So I have to make sure that I'm going the opposite direction to finish off that curve. So I tried to line it up a little bit, but I'll explain why it's not 100% necessary when you're creating uh, with the pen tool. Uh, you can always go back and adjust it later on. So I've got that bottom curve. Now I'm gonna go to the next spot and I want this curve to go upward. So remember this one, we dragged it up. So now in this spot, I wanna drag it downward. So I'm doing the opposite. I can create that nice curve there. Go to my next spot. drag it up my next spot drag it down so 
pretty straightforward. Just click and drag to create the handles, and that will create the curves. And you can create really any curve you want. You can move the handle in any direction. That's the really cool thing about it. So if you've got kind of an interesting shape, like someone's cheekbone or their chin or their nose, or maybe you're outlining their arm, you can create really unique curves that you can't do necessarily with an ellipse tool by itself. So you can go in any direction by holding the shift button down, you put some constraints on those handles. So now I can go vertical and this creates more of a perfect curve, like a circular curve. I can go horizontal or I can go at a perfect 45. So if you're doing something where you need a little bit more precision, you can use the constraints by holding down the shift button to create that as well. So now I'm done with this line segment, I'm gonna hit control and G and that line segment is done. Pretty nice, pretty easy way to make curves. Now let's say I don't like how far apart this is, that kind of throws everything off, right? Remember I told you, you can try to do as best you can using those handles, you click and drag and you try to match the lines or create lines, but with the direct selection tool, the white arrow tool, we can always go back and we can manipulate individual anchor points. We learned that in a previous video. So I can go back and I can make adjustments to my anchor points and to my curves at any point in time. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna use my direct selection tool. I'm gonna click on this last anchor point and you'll see that my handles pop back up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click and drag and move this in a little bit more so it kind of matches that curve a little bit. And then I can grab the handles and I can adjust the curves any way I want. So if I wanna bring this curve down a little bit more, I can go back and adjust those at any time. And I can click on any handle or any anchor point and then click on any handle and adjust those as I see fit. So as you're creating something, let's say you've got an image underneath and you're using the pen tool to trace over it. If it's not perfect, it's okay. So don't sit there and spend so much time trying to perfect that curve right in that spot. Sometimes you just got to place that anchor point, draw the curve line, make sure it's pretty close, and then just go to the next one and the next one. And what you can do is you can go back later and manipulate and move, click on anchor points, move them around wherever it needs to be, and then adjust the curves until it's perfect. So you don't have to get it perfect on the first try. You can always go back and change it. So that's a really great thing to remember when you're using the pen tool. And then the last thing I'm going to show you guys is how to use the pen tool. Uh, to create curves and straight lines in the same segment. So let's say I want to create uh, kind of the same design, but straight lines in between. So I'm going to click and drag, hold on that shift button to constrain my handles. And then I'm going to click and drag upward, holding on the shift button. But now I want to create a straight line in between. And you can see with that rubber band, it's telling me I'm going to create a curve line. So what we have to do is we have to kind of essentially let them know like, hey, we're going to stop this curve. And the way we do that is we click on the previous anchor point and you'll see that top handle. See how the top handle disappeared? Now it's saying, all right, you're gonna do a straight line. So we're getting rid of that handle there so I can move my anchor point or my pen tool and I'm gonna drop an anchor point here. But now I wanna bring the curve back. So what I can do is I'm gonna click on that anchor again and then click a third time and I'm gonna drag upward and you can see it's bringing out a handle from that anchor point. And now what I can do is there's my curve again. Now I'm going to drag down, hold down shift, and I've created that curve. So let me show you that again. So now I want to kill the curve, make a straight line. Go back to the previous anchor point, click on it. It gets rid of that handle, and now I can make a straight line. Now I'm going to click once. I'm going to click a second time, and I'm going to click a third time, and then drag that handle, hold down the shift button, straight down. Now I've created that handle. I've restarted that curve, click, and I want to drag up, remember the opposite direction, to create that curve again. And I can just keep repeating that process, or I can go back and now if I want to just make this whole thing a straight line to create this unique puzzle piece. And I'm all done. Oh, see what happened there? I didn't go back to the original anchor point. So now I got to hover over that. See, I got that little circle there. That lets me know, okay, now it's closed. 
So I didn't quite get there. And so that's why I had that little blue rubber band line coming off before. So I closed it off and now I've made that shape. So that is how you can create curved lines and straight lines in the same shape. So we know how to make curves, but let's say we've got too many lines going on or too many anchor points. So let's just jump back to this part right here. Let's say I don't like this point down here. I want it to go from here straight across and then come back down. So in our pen tool, you'll see there's that little triangle again, which means there are other tools hidden underneath. If I click and hold on that, you'll see I've got an add an anchor point and delete an anchor point. So let's say I'm gonna click on delete an anchor point and I'm gonna hover over an anchor point and then I click on it and it deletes it. So what it'll do is it'll get rid of the anchor point and then it'll connect and make a path between whatever anchor point was before and after that one. So that is how you can just really quickly delete an anchor point. And the shortcut for that is the minus key on your keyboard. Now let's say this square shape over here, let's say I wanna make kind of a badge design. I wanna have it pointed at the bottom, like a little triangle at the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on my pen tool. I'm gonna to go to add an anchor point tool. And then I can click on any path that I've created. And what I'm doing, I'm using my smart guide to find the center of that shape here. And I'm going to click on that path. And what I've done is I've just added an anchor point right there. So now what I'm going to do is remember our direct selection tool allows us to manipulate individual anchor points. So click on that direct selection tool. I'm going to click on that anchor point and then click and drag. And now I've created this little badge shape with that. So again, there's a lot of different ways to create kind of the same shapes. There's a lot of different avenues that you can do. The key is to figure out what is the most efficient and effective for the design that you are doing. When it comes to using the pen tool, remember the rule of thumb is to try to do it in as few anchor points as possible. I'm not saying there's a set number of anchor points you need to have per shape, but ideally you wanna to try to have as few anchor points as possible. The fewer the anchor points, the smoother the lines are going to look in the end. So that is the basics of the pen tool, and that should be enough to get you started on creating some complex shapes, creating some curves, even creating some really organic shapes. Like I said, coffee spills or kind of going around a human face, you can easily do that using the pen tool and these Bezier curves. So thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.